Welcome back to Tetra Can Super Monoblock. I'm about to start um, diving into and refurbishing this Sansui WS X1. And so I thought I'd just give my first impressions of this machine. And those first impressions are pretty positive. I made a first impressions video a while back about the 688 and kind of got into the topic of fidelity, how key factors are the width of the tape and how many regions that's split into and how fast the tape is going such that if you have two units both going at the same speed of say three and three quarter inches per second that's double the speed of commercial tape it's the high speed that's provided in most multi-track recorders and one tape's split into eight regions and one split into four and you record the same signal to both you're going to have better dynamic range and frequency response on the quarter of tape than you are on the eighth of a tape. If that's at all confusing, try and think of the analogy of pixels, like the more pixels that are in a digital image, the higher the resolution. Similarly, the more ferric particles or chrome particles or whatever the tape formulation is that are passing over the head each second, then broadly speaking, the fidelity is going to be better. Now, which combination of tape width and speed you use are going to give you slightly different results. But basically, wider tape at a higher speed means that the reproduction is closer to the capabilities of the human ear in terms of perceiving differences in volume and frequency. So when you have multiple tracks on one of these machines, you're getting a bit of a compromise in fidelity in order to be able to record more complicated music and do more overdubbing without bouncing down. And so the 688 was a machine where there were a lot of bells and whistles like a scrub facility and all sorts of mad stuff. But in essence, the fidelity per track was going to be less than on like a Tascan 244. It's going to be less than on a 414 Mark II, the tiny little blue one. This is a unit where the tape is split into six regions rather than eight. And um, I rather like the idea of that compromise. I've never recorded with one of these or what was the other manufacturer somebody was telling me i think maybe was it vestex was it aria someone else made a, a six track unit as well but the fidelity in each of those sections of tape is going to be higher than on say a 688 six is a bit of a sweet spot at least for this way that i write music four tracks i'm nearly running out of stuff i'm nearly like all right i need to bounce down and when i recorded in eight tracks then sometimes I find that tracks 7 and 8 are, are empty, unless I'm recording stereo signals. But 6 tracks, as Goldilocks would say, is just right. You can turn off the 6th channel and you've got 5 channels of audio and you can use the 6th one for sync. You know, again, that's a good compromise between synchronisation with your external gear and fidelity and still having a few tracks to play with that you can make quite a complete arrangement of material that's recorded directly onto the tape. And then if you compare the feature set of the 688 and other factors like the footprint, the weight, it's got a fair bit of weight to it. And it's not a small machine, but it's, it takes up a lot less space than the 688 does. I can comfortably carry it around without hurting my back. And it's still got auxiliary returns for the effects. I don't like the fact that it doesn't have any mid-range controls on the EQ. And it does have direct tape outs for all six channels. But I do like the fact that it's got the second deck so you can bounce down to two tracks within the same unit. Yeah, it just seems like a kind of quite a fun, powerful thing to have around in the studio. I mean, we'll wait and see how difficult this is going to be to repair. But I can't imagine that it's as difficult to take apart as a, a 644 or a 688. Maybe a bit of a rambling and short video there, but I thought I would go, hey, this exists. It's kind of rare. Kind of excited about it. And stick that up there on Tinterwebs before I get into the nitty gritty of dismantling and repairing. So, yeah, watch out for a more detailed specification video, repair, teardown videos. I'm almost certainly going to do some recording with this. I'm quite curious about it before I return it to its owner. See you again soon.